even though it's great, but then you sitting there and you're like, man, I'm only going to get three hours of sleep. Yeah. But that's the sacrifice we make for this sport we love. You know, uh, back to the chat room. Uh, Sluggo said, I was happy to see those guys keep their DAP routine. No need to have the same uh, vitriol as the fans. Sluggo, you're right. I just don't need it to be nine minutes. And I'm like, we don't went to the locker room, man. Y'all still out there. No. Just that, you know, do that, that after in the back. But yeah, you're right. It was I, I was happy to see that, you know, so it, it it's it's not this big storyline for for the media to run like, oh, does he hate or, or, or all that? Let's stick to basketball. Let's stick to basketball. That's what we're here for. We're here for basketball. So how about we stick to that? Okay. And since that, we're gonna stay with basketball. Uh and, and since we were talking about the Warriors and, and the um and the Rockets and, and I was talking about Steve Kerr. I just want to ask the room. This is the chat room, uh, and this is why I love for it to be interactive because I want you guys to uh, give me your answers to this. Now, we know the Hall of Fame for the NBA is not just what you do as a professional like it is in baseball and football. They take into context, you know, anything like college or anything like that. So my question is, he's very decorated. But is Steve Kerr a Hall of Famer? Is Steve Kerr worth of Hall of Fame? Five-time NBA champion. Now, I mean, it's not like they said we're going to ride the, the coattail of Steve Kerr or anything like that. But he contributed. He hit some big shots. And then now he's a coach. Now, some people will say he came into a situation that all he had to do is not F it up. So I I don't know. I'm not willing to say no. I'll say that. I just don't know. He may need to do a little bit more for the whole package. But five-time NBA champ, two-time as a, a coach. So that's total of seven. And he's been to the NBA Finals. Eight times? Maybe more if they lost, you know, some? I don't know. Mac Farrell said his tenure as a coach will get him in, I believe. This is what Mac Farrell is saying. Yeah. That's that's kind of where I'm leaning to, uh, Mac Farrell, is that maybe the tenure, you know, he, he when when you sit back and you actually look, and his whole portfolio and, and everything he's done, you know, because, of course, he, he doesn't have to do it right now, you know, but he's had this, you know, this back issue, you know, that 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 challenged his health. And we all thought he might would have had to retire, but seems like he's good now. But at the end of the day, when we go back, you know, are we going to be like, man, that dude is a Hall of Famer? I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one, but that's why I, that's why I'm asking you know some people in the chat room. I I will say this: I think he's still on his way if he's not there already. Shouts out to my man Big L who just jumped in the building. Uh, Big L, your Cubs, uh, they they fighting, they fighting. Well, Big L probably a Sox fan. If, if you, I'm sorry, Big L, yeah, I'm sure you are a Cubs fan, but but the the Cubs are fighting, Big L. Uh, Snuggle said, I don't see him as a Hall of Famer at this point. Let's see how the next few years play out. So it seems like everyone is going with the, the, the whole thing that, you know, let's see how this tenure goes, you know, with this team. Uh, now, I, I will say this, though. We can't we can't fault him or we can't uh, give a, a, a hit or a knock against him if, say, Kevin Durant leaves or Steph leaves or whatever. I'm not saying that stuff going to happen, but – if something lead, they leave and then the team is not what they were, then people are going to say, well, see, I told you. I told you he's not that great of a coach and everything. Every great coach, look, go back and look at it. Um, every great coach that is in the Hall of Fame or considered a great coach, there's not one coach 
that that people would look at and say, well, man, he he coached a bunch of scrubs and turned them into you know all stars and all that. No, you got to have great players. You all they got always got more than one. Popovich got more than one superstar. Yeah, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, then Timmy and and um, uh, Tony Parker, you know, and all that. Uh, Phil Jackson. We don't even need to talk about all the people he had. You know, uh, Rhea Arbaugh, you know, uh, it, the list goes on and on. Pat Riley. I mean, they they all had great players. So you got to have that to be in the conversation, you know, of a Hall of Famer. If you, you know, if you're looking at it, the coach aspect of it, you know, uh, Big L said new King KD is the best player in the NBA. Facts. Big L, I arguably I will say he's the best player in the NBA. Uh, I, I'm still kind of leaning to you know LeBron got it you know a little bit over him, but Big L is on this whole thing about KD you know being the best player. He just needs to win. Don't worry about being the best player. If he keeps winning, he won't have to worry about that you know at all. You know now another team that is in Chicago that has to worry about something is this whole um public image that they are portraying and we are back in Chicago again the Chicago Bulls have two brothers on their team Bobby Porters and uh Nikolai Miratek these brothers at practice going at it jawing at each other and it got too real and someone decided they were going to throw them paws and that person that threw that paw them paws was Bobby Portis so now he has been suspended for eight games uh his teammate Miratic uh is out for multiple weeks because he has a concussion and facial fractures uh to his face and this is all still no pun intended you know a black eye for the Chicago Bulls again we had the discussion last season where D Wade, Jimmy Butler, they were not getting along with the you know younger guys. They were going back and forth. Does Fred Hoiberg has control of this team? Has he lost his control? Do they respect him? Uh, is he going to be on his way out? What are they doing? Then D Wade gets bought out because we all know he wasn't happy there. So it looked like it's a new fresh start, new fresh start for the Bulls. You know, they traded Jimmy Butler. They got some guys back and like Zach Levine and Chris Dunn, you know, and all that. And then this happens. Now, I'm not going to Bobby Portis was wrong. You know, I mean, teammates, they get into altercations all the time. They don't two piece each other, you know, or anything like that. Normally someone is there to break it up or they push each other and all that stuff. Now, you know, throwing blows and all that, that was more back in the eighties, you know, maybe early nineties, you know, with, with Jordan and Isaiah Thomas and, you know, all them in their practices, I'll be like, okay, that's just a Wednesday, you know, not 9 PM, you know, for the wait a minute show, shameless plug, but it's just, a, it's another day. You know, but that's not where the NBA game is, you know, these days is you have to be able to control yourself. Your own teammate. This guy's out for multiple weeks. I don't know what their relationship is going to be. You know, after that, is it going to be? Well, hey, man, you know, it was just a fight. We cool. You know, no, no. Heck no. You two piece me and. And, and put me out for multiple weeks. No, when I come back, mm-mm. now some people I know they say when they come back, it's gonna be a, a second fight because they want a rematch. But no, nah, man, we ain't talking. We uh, uh-uh. I may not even pass you the ball at that point. Yeah, yeah, I said it, but it's unwanted attention for the Chicago Bulls. They got enough problem as it is with not having any star players. They got enough problem as it is giving up that 2-0 lead that they had Boston in, uh, even though, you know, you lost Ray John Rondo. Still no excuse, you know. Something has to happen, you know, on that. Well, something did happen. 
Bobby Porter's got eight games. Now, both of them admitted, you know, that they're part in it and, and they're taking responsibility for it. So that is good, you know, on, on, on their part that they are doing that. And maybe they can move on. But, you know, I'm still going to be looking in my corner of my eye if I can see out the corner of my eye and, and be like, yeah, that dude did two piece me, though. You know, Ugh. the Chicago Bulls, man, they need to they need to get it together, need to get it together. Big L said, uh, and this is going back to the uh, wait a minute show chat room. Uh, Big L said, uh, Bobby P is from Little Rock, Arkansas. He about that action. Yeah, I know he's from Little Rock. You know, he shouldn't be about that action because it's going to cost him that action cost him some money, too. You know, uh, shouts out to my man that's in the building. My man, Truck D. Hey, I got to meet Truck D. I'm going back to TDSS3. I got to meet Truck D at TDSS3. So shouts out to Truck D that's in here uh, chilling with us tonight, man. Uh, and, and we probably should be talking about your Cowboys, Chuck D, whether, whether they, can the league or anybody make up their mind, is, is Ezekiel Elliott going to be suspended or not? I mean, just pick one and roll with it. I mean, I'm, he is Mr. Loophole now. It's like every time they file some, he, he got something behind it. And they be like, well, you know, we'll give you another week, get another two weeks, we we'll get another, another week. Before we know it, we'll be in the week 13, 14. You know, it'll be over and, and, and we'll be like, well, maybe he'll get suspended next year. So this is Mr. Loophole right now. You know, uh, Big L said <laughs> truck D can bowl facts. Um, that's an inside joke, everyone. You had to be at TDSS three to get it. But, uh, so yeah, Chicago Bulls, man, please. Please stop fighting each other. I mean, if you're going to fight, at least fight the other team. You know, I don't condone violence, but if, you, if you're going to fight, fight the other team. You know, don't fight each other and mess everything up. Indeed. Yeah, Lopan, exactly. You know, Lopan always trying to fight the other person. He don't try to fight me. Indeed. Yeah, I know. So Lopan, you know, well, Lopan, he, he know what a good, you know, what feels like too if he had to fought me, but uh, it, you just don't fight your folks, you know, that's that, that just what it is, man, you know, now, let's move on from the NBA, and we're going to get back into football, we're going to get into this college football, and, and I just want to talk about a young gentleman, because on this show, I like to, you know, point out great people, you know, that do great things, I, it's not always bad things that, that we discuss, you know, uh, and I don't like to always discuss bad things because it, there are great people out there. But uh, there's a game that's going on this weekend. Uh, Penn State is playing against Michigan. And Michigan has, which I'm from Flint, Michigan, so I cheer for the University of Michigan. Go blue. But we got a problem on our hand. A big problem. And that problem is, uh, uh, a, I'm not even going to call him by his first and last name. I'm going to address him because I don't want no problems, as Mr. Barkley. Mr. Barkley, who is the running back for the Penn State Nittany Lions, he will be, they, they're playing Saturday night, 8.30. So this is a main, you know, main time, uh, I mean, 7.30. Um, is a, um, I almost said matinee. <laughs> this is a prime time game for the Michigan Wolverines. This is a game to really, sh for that defense to see where they stack up. This brother, Mr. Barkley, is no joke. He's built like a, a brick house, but he has the moves of like, not, not Barry Sanders, but his agility. I mean, I've seen this dude, you know, get in the hole, get out. He got the speed. He got the power. I've seen him do the jump cuts. He makes people look ridiculous. Freezing people on the out of bounds line, you know, because they just so intimidated, running people over. He, I mean, he is a monster. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna have to watch this game Saturday at 7:30. I'm hoping that Michigan can contain this this brother, but it is going to be hard. But the reason I also bring this up is that this kid, and I'm gonna call him a kid, even though he's built like a grown man. This kid has an awesome heart, man. He's always uh, uh, polite. He's always, you know, uh, 
positive. He's always uh, one of the things that he did. I'm going to point it out, you know, because, again, we always point out the, the bad things people do. We need to point out the good things that people do. You know, he's one of those. He's just one of those natural athletes that he doesn't have to.